Hello, I'm Rob Walsh, President and Owner of Ocean Equipment. We're the manufacturers of NavPod, waterproof housings for marine electronics. We're here aboard the company boat Seawolf here in Nanaimo, Canada, on our way to Desolation Sound. If you had seen some videos from last year, is where we introduced StarPod. We mounted it on the boat up in Wrangell, Alaska. Since then, we did sail the boat down the inside passage and arrived at the home port of um, uh, Anacortes, Washington. So over the winter, we got great performance from the StarPod and using the Starlink with inside it there. There's no signal degradation from putting it inside the pod. Um, what we did notice over the winter, if, if water accumulated on the flat surface, you would lose some signal there. So what we did is we intro we're introducing now for 2024 a new line of StarPod systems uh, both for the actuated dish as well as the flat dish. These are both the dishes that sell for about $600. We'll have one model for each and we're selling them as complete systems. And what I mean about systems is what I'm going to show you right now what a system is comprised of. That, that's the StarPod. That's the thermoformed acrylic capped um, ABS plastic that we've been making nav pods out of for 30 years now. Uh, what we've also done now is we incorporated a base. This is the wedge base that's part of every system we sell. The wedge base tilts it at a, a 10 degree angle. This is CNC machined out of polyethylene. Polyethylene is starboard, same kind of material. It's got a little bit of a waxy surface that also helps us with our interface as it swivels right here. So on the inside, you'll see how that's bolted into place. So it will come bolted into place and there's the angle built into the star pod. The front of a nav pod is two pieces of thermoform material and this will, this will be the top of it and these two will go together like that. Over here is the new star tower. The star tower is part of it. The star tower is eight millimeter, powder coated aluminum, very sturdy, very strong. Inside the parts kit that comes with the star pod system will be a couple of gaskets. These particular ones here will be a Teflon as well as a unique one here with a PSA, an adhesive, on, one, on both sides of it. You'll do this as part of assembly and you put this onto the top of the through hull and then you peel off the rest of it and what this will allow you to do is to stick it up inside the star tower. There you go. The nut that comes with for the top of the through hull is very unique. It's made to fit any one of these deck fill wrenches that, you know, this is made by Groco. You see them online and most boat owners have some, some kind of these. So these will fit in and that would be your wrench for tightening it down. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down by hand as much as I can and I'll finish it off with the deck fill wrench. If it's turning on you a little bit, it's just that the adhesive hasn't grabbed yet but it will as soon as you put a little pressure on it. Okay, that feels pretty tight. Usually put that nav, we'll align it with the nav pot on the side, square it up a bit, and we'll give it one more good turn. Okay, that should do it. We do supply an extra screw. If, you, if you're using the newer dish, which is a flat dish, and on the instructions they say you can tune it, and you may be turning it now and then, um, you, you could put a screw here to make sure that doesn't open up right there, right at the edge of the threads. Simple, drill a small hole, put it in there, certainly lock, lock this into place. We found really no movement there. So that's what it looks like for the bottom of the system. Now, to go ahead, and do the rest of it. There, there's the top of it. We go ahead and take the actuated dish, we put that in place here, and look for our parts kit. And in the parts kit that comes with it, you'll see these foam washers. Well, it kind of just keeps a little separation between the top of the dish and the thermoformed housing 
also would eliminate any kind of a vibration or anything else that possibly can go in there. There's no real need of the exact position on these. It's just putting a nice little quarter inch spacing between the top and the star pot itself. Okay. So now we take the actuated dish, place it in, it fits very snugly in place. We go back to our we go back to our parts kit and you'll see these brackets right here. They're all the same. And you take your brackets and you put it in each corner. We grab the screws that come out with the lock washers and our Phillips head screwdriver and we'll just go ahead and attach these together. So hold those brackets into place. It's really two screws per bracket. Okay, we're down to the last screw. There are eight screws in all. So those four brackets hold the dish firmly in place here. Okay, the next we're going to be doing is I have to go run the cable now. So I'm going to get ready to mount this part, the base assembly, up top there. Now right above that hailer horn is where I had it last year. And we're going to go put it in this kind of an orientation up there. So right up here is where I'm going to mount this. Now I got, now's the job where I got to get up there and drill the holes. The base will hold uh, 7 16 bolts, or probably overkill, but a nice fit for this. I went down to the local chandlery. We don't include the mounting hardware and just picked up a nice set of you know 716 bolts. I grabbed some washers, grab one washer for either side, and some lock stainless steel lock nuts here. Other tools required would just be, because I'm going to be through bolting it, a 5 8 inch socket and a 5 8 inch open end wrench. So that's going to be for attaching the base, the star tower, up right there. And I'll kind of get to that now. Okay, well I have it in place, I drilled the holes, I put the bolts through, it all fits well. But it's going to be easier for me to take it off, bring it down here, assemble it together, and then put it back up there. Well what I've done is I've taken it from its position up top, back down here, and I have the wire running all the way through it. So now we're going to attach this end of it right here. So on this arm, actuated mount, you see that base. The base actually helps to hold this cable in place. So what I do is I take a little bit of black electrical tape here and maybe a couple of wire ties. I tend to like to seal it right here so it can't slide out. Almost make a little speed bump here. And then we'll go ahead and just really tape that in place. Okay. Well, that's not going anywhere, but for extra security, we'll just go ahead and put a wire tie on here as well. So. Okay, that's not coming out. And just go upside down. Now you see how that tube itself was straight up. There's enough clearance in there with this 10 degree angle so, so the tube is straight 
and it still fits in there. It will go into an obstruction mode when you turn it on. From my experience from over a year of cruising with it, when we obstructed with it, we don't have to break the warranty and drill a hole and dismantle the wires or try to cut it apart and take the tube out. There's been a lot of um, boaters with experience on eliminate the tube, eliminating the actuation. Um, personally, I kind of think there's so many more satellites out there now than there was when this thing came out, when they were searching the sky more. Um, this has a 110 degree viewing angle, the new one has a 130 30 degree viewing angle, the new one being the flat mount, and they really get a good view of the sky and only getting better all the time with all of the, the, the more satellites that are going up there. Okay, well we have it all positioned well together. Um, down the middle is the tube, the actuated tube. On the new flat mount one, you don't have that. But in this one we have it, this bait, it has enough clearance. So when that tube is straight up and down, it still fits within this angle right here. What you do is when you get the new actuated and you turn it on, um, it starts in a stow mode and it will go ahead and center itself and then as before it starts hunting. So unplug it right then. If you miss it for some reason it starts hunting, click it back to stow mode which will put it at an angle for shipping in a box the way it came to you and then undo stow mode and it will go straight up and down and then just unplug the router. So you want to test out your Starlink before you put it in the, into the StarPod and that's one thing you need to do is just to get it straight up and down and it will fit right in there. Okay, so now we have that in place. In our parts kit, we have our NavPod tamper-proof screws. These are nickel chrome plated tamper-proof screws that we use on all of our NavPods. And we have a special NavPod wrench. And they all go in just like that. So clean, shiny, holds it together nicely. When you bring it together, as long as you're just touching with that gasket, don't, no need to over tighten it because it's really the internal gasket that's working as well. But we do want to bring the two halves together and just enough to do that. Okay, we have eight screws in all. They're all in there. Let's check the, the gasket. Tighten up a little more here. Just don't over tighten. I don't like that. <clears throat> Okay, double seal. There's a one on the inside I mentioned. You've got a silicone gasket on the outside. And there it is. That's a pretty solid piece right there. So, we've got a StarPod 2 system with the StarPod, the wedge, and we got the Star Tower. All as one system. Now we're ready to raise it up and put it in place. Once we put it in place, we'll be going ahead with the bolts I got earlier, and we'll go bolt it in up there.